feel very elated actually to be sworn in for a second occasion to serve in the Senate. Um, looking forward to participating later in the week in the SNS debate. Um, I'd like to put this on record my profound thanks to Prime Minister Motley um, for asking me to fill the breach on this occasion. You all know the circumstances in which the Prime Minister and the government's wish to have another senator in place but was not has not come to pass and, and I am reflective um, about the whole whole process. Um, I have been given my uh, remit, so to speak, um, on, on the issues on which the government will want um, stronger representation on. And I, I think that we will have a, a good um, good time there. I've been there in the past. And uh, before I forget, I should say thanks again to Prime Minister Motley because were it not for her on the first occasion, I would not have been appointed in the Senate. A lot of people would credit um, the late Prime Minister Arthur, but Ms. Motley had asked me as General Secretary then in 2003 to be the chairman of the Northern Zone of the party during that election. And it was that opportunity that she gave me, which I turned down on that occasion, but because I thought I was not experienced enough, but she threw me in at the deep end and brought me to the attention of Prime Minister Arthur and I was able to go to the Senate. So I thank her again for the opportunity and I rem remembering that one as well. Any other questions you want, you can ask. So you uh, Gregory, the last time you would have served, the environment in Barbados would have been way, way more different from a social perspective with the pandemic we have now. Yeah. Do you think your voice is a more important one now with what the country is going through? Certainly it's a different environment. Um, I served from 2003 to 2008 and we were transitioning. The big issue of the day was um, moving towards a single market and economy. And since then, the world went into a financial crisis in the late 2000s, and then we've seen the tumultuous changes, climate change, um, you know, um, the whole change in the attitudes of government is, is much more difficult to, to build consensus across political lines all over the world. Um, we are seeing now war and the effects of war and tactical aggression by states. And the issues of small island states still are on the, um, the forefront. I mean, sustainable development is going to be a much more harder task for countries like Barbados. Uh, we still have to grapple with issues of economic growth. How do we pull people out of poverty? How do we protect rights of vulnerable people in the country and the society? And also be a champion for vulnerable groups and people elsewhere in the world. So it's much more complex, but it's facilitated a lot more easily by technology and the reach of technology and how we use technology to do what we have to do. So it's an exciting time, but it's much more, I think, more challenging. But I think my experience in the past and, and the work that I've been doing um, in, in, in terms of representing workers as an attorney at law and staying on top of labor issues in relation to how um, workers are treated. It is something that I will be committed to in the Senate as well. So I like to say to all my clients that um, my appointment does not take me out of the, the, the vanguard fight for workers' rights and working people's rights in Barbados. It's something I will address in the estimates as I speak and to deal with some of the issues and to help government craft and shape policy that will improve working conditions of people in Barbados. Yeah, yeah.